now looking at whether a formal education is the only indication of competence is that the only way to judge how competent an individual is with me now uh, shashi and uh, rohin thanks both uh, so much for coming in you believe that yes there is a formal education that is needed that at the end of the day is going to prove just how competent you are how skilled you are why would you say that it is so important see uh, when we say that formal education is a measure of competence no it may not be a measure of competence but that's what keeps you surviving in the society mm -hmm. if i'm an average person who uh, have no degree mm -hmm. or who have no formal training in such such and such thing then i'll not get a decent job mm. to have my shelter and food mm. that is my basic need so formal education as such uh, is very much required mm. as much as the degree mm. so when you don't have it you might be able to do great things there are always exceptions mm. of people who do not have formal education who do not have a degree mm. doing exceptionally great things in a field mm. which they do not have degree in but mm. the exceptions uh, apart mm. we have to look at a common man mm. wherein uh, they need some education uh, and some training in order to be able to survive in the society right you need to survive and the degree is is uh, sort of proof that you you struggled for it you put in blood sweat tears yes. into it and you have something to show for it <laughs> shashi so i i would say that degree is not a determining factor mm. for a, a you know as per uh, if you consider the competence of a of, of a person especially if you if you have just gone back in the history and seen people like einstein or people like uh, rockefeller there are many people who are very successful in their mm. lives but yet did not have a formal education mm. and in the sense when i say formal education uh, i also at the same time question the formal education that we have today in india mm. when we point at formal education that we have today and say that this is not something that mm. you know a certain person did not have mm. i would say what is the firstly what kind of a formal education that we have mm. it's an assembly line education to mm. be frank uh, the kind of system that we have is geared towards marks and running through the system for the mm. sake of running and getting a degree as a stamp mm. where is the drive for learning and excellence in the entire system mm. whether it's centered around it is what i'm saying there is absolutely learning and excellence somewhere in that in the right. system mm. so if you talk about the degree whether it's required to be competent in the market i right. would say no right okay your times uh, up there are of course all those who would say that you know we talk about the rockefeller you talk about einstein you even say talk about walt disney and they sort of they're few and far be between but i take your point i i take his point and look at the kind of education system that we have look at all that i've said about the problems in our higher education mm -hmm. system and also look at the kind of country that we are look at our diversity look at all those who don't have the kind of access that they should have yes. given that is it still sort of fair to expect everyone to sort of meet this basic standard that everyone who gets only only those who come with these degrees are those who are qualified uh, i would ask a simple question mm -hmm. would you uh, employ a driver mm -hmm. who is not having a driver's license so it's that critical so, yeah it's that critical so mm -hmm. there are some critical systems which people have to handle he mm -hmm. said he mentioned about uh, people coming out of assembly line mm -hmm. not everybody is einstein not everybody is a disruptor mm -hmm. and creator of technology Correct. people there are a ma maximum uh, percentage of people mm -hmm. are followers mm -hmm. they just follow an existing system they mm -hmm. just need to survive they mm -hmm. don't want to create something they don't want to create a kingdom they just want to survive mm -hmm. so for that case they need basic Uh, mm. certificate they mm. need a basic uh, college degree mm. or or uh, education mm. in order to be able to go ahead and say that okay mm. i can get my job now mm. i may not be qualified but i can always learn on the job mm. like he said you can always learn on the job there is absolutely no problem with it right if i am coming from a reservation background and i don't even make the cut mm. but i am still getting the job mm. there is nothing wrong mm. in it because when you are doing right. a job you have to learn anyway right your times up but respond to that point uh, shashi that you know there has to be sort of one criteria that sort of fits all even if it's just the beginning but it's got to fit everybody given the diversity otherwise especially in a country like india there's always some some group or the other who will stand and say no we are disadvantaged this doesn't work for us then what do you do yeah so uh, the, you know sticking to hmm. the hmm. line of thought hmm. that he has hmm. about hmm. a driver hmm. or even a civil engineer hmm. constructing a bridge correct the point is such specific skills hmm. there it needs specialization hmm. i'm not against specialization hmm. but what i'm saying is hmm. beyond that for a person who is you know constructing a bridge he has to know how the bridge is affecting the trade between the two places he has to know how it is different it, it's a it's more than just that specialization that is required mm -hmm. a formal way that we have today in the indian higher education system today it's not addressing that particular problem of having a broad based having a a, a set of uh, 
some foundational skills mm. for example creative uh, creativity mm. are we really promoting the, now the worry is the system is actually creating you know killing the creativity that mm. is even existing mm. when a kid is 6 years old or 5 years old mm. so we are a country where there are all these graduates who even got graduate graduation degrees mm -hmm. but are unemployable yes so there are people who have got degrees and are unemployable and there are always visionaries who break out and without formal degrees create great stuff but the idea i am talking about is bring, bringing back the discussion to the mm. point where you started mm. if i am a minister who doesn't have a formal degree mm. but i am uh, talking of uh, taking care of that particular aspect uh, in the ministry mm. then i still need the support of people who are formally trained correct that's precisely my point so correct. if i am going to talk about uh, uh, say finance ministry or mm. uh, uh, say education uh, somebody has to take care of mm. i may not have formal education mm. in order to be able to create something mm. but i may bring out of box things or Correct. from out of my experience Correct. but Which at the same from, time right so you're saying that those those out of the box ideas or lateral thinking can come from my experience can, can, yes, can come from but you still you know, need my people who have formal training Correct. in order to be able to make it sustainable Correct. over a period of time Correct. in order to make anything sustainable mm. you have to make it formal mm. and you have to get it from people who have done formal training right. otherwise your budget yeah. 10 rupees goes here there mm. and the entire country collapses right no for like the, you, all the specialized mm. versions mm. in the sense there are a mm. lot of bureaucrats helping mm. or mm. working with the ministers yes. right but moving away from that towards mm. you know whether this formal education system that we have mm. today is geared towards students doing or people doing something that they are interested in mm. you know something that you raised mm. today if you see people you know everyone choosing something or the other because of uh, the societal pressure or the parental pressure mm. for example computer science economics mm. engineering are the mm. top courses that generally people Correct. people prefer Correct. how come if everyone in india is mm. starting to choose something they are interested in mm. how can they end up with only three subjects correct so something is fundamentally wrong in the mm. way that we designed our system for example after class 10 we choose maths physics chemistry or commerce why only these three subjects mm. for a person who is an engineer mm. is it not important to understand sociology for example two tribal areas connected by a bridge by a civil engineer yes. is it not important for an engineer to plan things or understand that's of course the perhaps an indication that is what's wrong with our uh, higher education where formal education sort of loses it in, in a sense and what it needs to do to get sort of prepare itself for the challenges of the next sort of decades and and, and centuries that we have uh, ahead of us but you mentioned engineering we have uh, the engineer with us right i mean rohin's from bispilani so did you get the sense that there were lots of people with you because you know i know it's almost cliched now but given the number of engineers that that that, that we have yes. did you sort of get the sense around that people are here because you know let's do this like this is what we ought to do the, the let's do it the point is you still have to differentiate yourself hmm. so if you but have to do that but everyone that do they no no hmm. they don't actually if uh, there are 1000 people passing out of bits every year from hmm. just one in, uh, one campus hmm. Hmm. so that doesn't mean that all 1000 of them are going to be uh, excelling in that field Correct. but they still need those degrees in order to get their bread and butter hmm. do you know so, how many how many actually engineers within that uh, you know from the pilani campus how many of us because i come from pilani too so mm -hmm. how many yeah okay. so how many uh, graduates are actually sticking to the profession of engineering mm. the statistics would say it is 80 to 85% of the engineers move away from oh, engineering wait, right. yes that's right they all go for writing a cat exam going mm. to an iim right. so what is the point mm. and why did we i i mean i question myself too why did i waste uh, an, an engineering seat if i'm not going to do anything about engineering but do you really think it was a waste uh, shashi do you think that you imbibed something no, that from the college you? from the college there is exceptional uh, uh, you know uh, benefits uh, there's huge amount of benefits I that i had that. correct for example i was uh, i was doing my research work in in singapore and something which is mm. very basic is that do i know philosophy of science right your time's up but carry on So this is something which I I really did not understand when I was doing my engineering mm. and most of the class 12 students I don't know if they are mm. really get towards understanding the value of this this interdisciplinary knowledge mm. but today in the system how flexible we are mm. in the system itself mm. to actually allow students to change their specializations correct for example after second year mm. do we really uh, can a student change a specialization correct. once they realize that it's not something that they're mm. interested in again it's not just how rigid we can be and how we sort of yeah. need to sort of come up with those out of box <laughs> idea or <laughs> lateral thinking but you're This is, this is a classic league? case this is a classic case of uh, being jack of all and being a, a specific uh, sk having a specific skill set so he is talking of getting exposed to other fields correct which is perfectly fine mm. and nobody stops you from doing that mm. in a formal setup mm. in a formal education setup nobody stops you from doing that mm. but in order to be able to get that Uh, your bread and butter again mm. is something that you still need that uh, degree or you have the bit stamp with you 
that is carrying uh, you forward. Otherwise, possibly you wouldn't have gotten into YFP in the first place. Right? No, no, no. So no. If there are Shantani the, cases. Right. If you see the program. The brand, basically. The brand that takes you forward gives you the Philip. The beyond, of course, you said yeah. that you, you had a great time and you sort of learned a lot. But yeah. that is a very important point. There are all those who would say that the, the, the brand of bits that, that took you forward. I you would know. say if you just look at, if it is in my case, then look at the other graduates from the same course. Mm. They were not uh, IITians and Bitsians. They were people from across different disciplines from, we covered, we have actually every single state covered. The kind of diversity that we have in the batch is exceptional. That's the reason I actually, I would say it's a perfect uh, void filling activity for me, the young, entire Young India Fellowship, because I something that I missed at the uh, undergrad, mm. that uh, exposure to arts and sciences. Right. Let, let us think of a simple screening process. Mm. Okay, if you were to pick a person uh, to be uh, suitable for a particular job, mm. how would you choose in a country wherein you have hum huge amount of population mm. and people with well, diverse backgrounds and right. how would you, how, what, what are the parameters with which you will be able to categorize these people and take the ones you need. So it for example. It is simpler to go by brand and say that, you know, for example, because placements. Because you are from XYZ, so therefore you therefore are smarter you are than the rest. Therefore you are generally smart. But the point here is, that is not the only determining factor. It's you, not, it's not. It's obvious, it's but a you, question. If but you want to make something done. systematic, right. if you have to make something systematic, right. you have to go through a formal process. Right. So if there is a basic... Uh, no, formal cut, process cut and formal class. education are two different things that I... I no, I formal mentioned. education is something that facilitates to get through the system mm. in, a, in, in a systematic manner. Otherwise, mm. what happens is you will uh, end up interviewing a hell lot of people right. and still get with right. nobody. Let me, just, let let me just, okay, yeah. okay, 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 okay. Now that we've got our, our tempers go going here and of course very <laughs> articulate, uh, you know, views on, on both sides. Let me just simplify it. You're saying that they, you, you've got to start somewhere. There's got to be some systematic, parameter. Yeah. This is perhaps one parameter. Right or wrong, this is one parameter. It is, of course, for people like you, you know, and, and perhaps you as well, but, you know, to change that or, or bring in the new thinking and, and for the minister as well. But uh, coming back to the point that there's got to be some parameter, there's got to be sort of, how do you distinguish one from the other? Certainly. I mean, you have a short interview. What do you do? You go by college. Oh, you know, you went to the cream. You are better than the rest. What, mm. what subject did you study? Oh, oh, more sought after. You. What do you go by? Then you go by grades. How did you do? Oh, you, you did really well. You know, especially just passed out of 12. How does one, where do you determine it? I mean, look at Delhi University. How, it's only largely based, you, you only qualify for the next level if you sort of are 95% plus. Absolutely. Thanks yeah. for raising that point. I have an interesting take on it. So if you just look at the first year job, hmm. maybe you're right. Hmm. You will get placements or, uh, you know, major companies in Correct. India Correct. with less awareness of what quality is maybe, mm. but knowing that IITs and BITs or popular brands, whatever right. the brand is, right. they would generally go there because they know that the selection process was too, mm. too uh, rigorous, Correct. maybe few Correct. years back. Correct. So the graduates inside are very good is yeah. the assumption. Correct. But you just look at the like NASCOM the report. IITs and IIMs. Yeah, right. but why would a NASCOM report would say 76% are not employable, which Correct. includes IITs. Correct. So the question uh, is basically what is required and what is the industry looking tell for? Tell me, I'm running out of time, but tell me quickly, what do you believe are the three parameters on which individuals should be judged? The individuals should be judged based on how uh, critical and yet responsible they are. No, number one, critical to raise the questions and responsible to answer the questions. Right. The ability to lead and take initiative and be self-aware. And number three, it's very, very important to be creative. Mm. So the are these three basically. intangibles? Intangibles. In, basically. These are more fundamental because Correct. a driver can do the driving. Right. But an engineer can do that. The, it's right. beyond it's that. Beyond if you're that. looking for careers beyond that, maybe it's an idea. We're looking for careers beyond that. Rohan, uh, I'll give you the last word there. Uh, on the program. He's of course listed on what he <laughs> believes intangible. It will be, I would imagine, quite a challenge and, and rather subjective interview it would be if it would be based on it. But I would like to sort of I have a lot of data on sit in really. proof of this. We will, we will uh, <laughs> get that from you. But uh, if, if leadership mm. is one of the criteria that you're going to put as a parameter, mm. you will end up with thousand leaders and no follower. Mm. In general, people mm. are followers. Mm. They are not leaders. Right. And what you're talking about is a very special training mm. and a very special mark mm. for maybe a specific case. Mm. What I am talking about is a form education setup is made for a purpose hmm. it's not something that is continuing in all the countries uh, because it's baseless right. because it is properly thought out a lot of people have put in 
so much time and energy into it right. on what is the basis on which they are graded, what right. is the basis on which the exam uh, right. curriculum is, what is the basis on which they are taught, right. and there are, what are the experiments that they are, one right. has to perform. So you're saying All it's been are... tried and tested, it's worked. Yes. There's no need to sort of scrap it and throw it out of the no, window. One needs to put but new But perhaps markers, improve every, it. Yes. It perhaps one improve it, perhaps raise the level. Yeah. You're then. saying, no, you know, we, 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 need, we don't just need to improve the level, we need a sort of drastic overhaul, really, as it yeah. were, and how, as, as we approach it. And clearly the debate not yet over. I know you guys can carry on for a while more, but we have to wrap it here. Rohin Shashi, thanks very much uh, for taking our time to speak to us. Thanks very much. Well, that's it for now. Keep your views coming in. What do you think? Uh, how does it matter? How do you see this debate? Remember, you can tweet us, write to us on our, our Facebook page or even our NDTV social page. We're slipping into a quick break now after this passionate and very well argued debate. Back with lots more on the other side, including all that's making news online, all the videos and news that you missed which we're going to make sure you don't miss anymore. Be right back.